Hi, I'm Karen Esposito from Olive Bridge, New York, and this is The Rosie O'Donnell Show. On today's show, Tim Robbins, Rosie and Sally face-offing, Crafty and Cranky, and Debbie Reynolds. Hit it, John! <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. Where are you from? Olive Bridge, New York. Where is Olive Bridge? On the other side of the Ashokan Reservoir. Where is the Ashokan <laughs> Reservoir? In Ashokan, New York. It's where New York City gets their water from. It's about two hours from New York? About two hours. It's about 140 miles north from Excellent. here. Excellent. What do you do there in Olive Branch? I'm a certified nurse's aide, Ralston County um, Infirmary in Golden Hill, Kingston, New York. Nurse's aide. Nurse's aide. So, like, on ER, who would you be? Not Juliana Margulies? <laughs> sure, I can be her. You sort of would be her? Sure to be her. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's nice to see you here. Thank you very much. Look at all of these um, entries that we have. People trying to win our trip, because, you know, we're going to Universal Studios down in Orlando. I sent 25 in, Rosie. You sent 25 in? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Karen, I imagine did, if we picked you. Wouldn't that be weird? <laughs> yes, it would. Well, we can't have you pick you since you entered, so okay. we, we thought we'd bring in a helper. Okay. Come on down, secret helper. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man spins a web any size, catches thieves just like flies. Look out! <laughs> Here comes the Spider-Man. First winner, Gail Nettle from Algonquin, Illinois. You're coming! <laughs> Next, John Carsley and Chasmin Snyder. You're coming! <laughs> They're from Florida. The next, from Colorado Springs. Lilani Herrera. You're coming! <laughs> Next, from St. Clair, M.O. would be Montana or Missouri? Missouri. Missouri, of course it would. <laughs> Martha Clark. You're coming! <laughs> and last but not least, I'm sorry, Karen, it's oh, not you. Okay. From Scottsdale, Arizona, Michael Riga. You're coming! That's okay. We really wanted to go, Rosie. We love you, Rosie. We bought you a bunch of presents, Rosie. <laughs> Don't All right, me you could come. Ah! Can I go give her a kiss? All right, come oh, on, give me a hug. All right. All right. Can you I know I would say yes? I brought your yeah. children um, um, all yeah. the records. You bought my kids a record? Yes, I did. All right. Um, chipmunks. The no, chipmunks. It's chipmunks. nice. No one's seeing you because your back's oh, to the sorry. camera. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Karen bought me a present. Thank she, you very much. She just kissed up enough that we let her come to Florida. <laughs> Get back to Thank your you. seat. <laughs> Say hi to John McPhee to McPhee. These are the winners. I have to keep them somewhere special. They told me Someplace not to drop safe. them. I'll keep them. That's good. Keep them right. Karen said I'll hold. Karen, don't be yeah, pushy, okay? Exactly. Jeez. All right. So how are you, Johnny? I'm great. Congratulations on a job well done. The Nickelodeon Kids Thank Choice Awards. Thank you very Awards. much. Awesome. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. 
It was very tiring. Right, you're not quite as hoarse as you were last I'm year. I'm not as hoarse as last year, no. <laughs> but it was, it was very, it was exhausting. Yeah, I'll bet. And, it's insane. Uh, I brought my kids with me. Uh-huh. And they hated it. They did? No, they didn't hate the show. They right. liked the show, but it was so tiring for them, you I'll know? I'll bet. A rehearsal they, and, the, you know. Right, and they're waking up New York time, four in the morning. It's right. still dark out. Right. And he was just so tired, and I said, kept crying. And I finally said to him, Honey, when mommy has to go away and do a show like this, just for two days, yeah. you want to come with mommy or you want to stay home? He goes, I want to stay home. Oh. Why did you have to bring me here? I don't want to be here. The guilt, what the angst sweetie. that I... Because if I don't bring them, then I get such anxiety. You miss them, of course. I miss them and yeah. I worry, you right. know? So I brought them and they had a horrible time. They, they but I felt better. And isn't that what's important? <laughs> Lessons learned. Oh, I, I think my son has a crush on Britney Spears. Oh, yeah? See Britney Spears on those award show. Hello, Britney. Uh -huh. Put on a vest. What were you wearing? Okay. <laughs> wearing a little white midriff. Hello. Yikes. Kid show. <laughs> <laughs> Kids' choice words. But my son kept talking about her. <laughs> At four years old, he's like, Mama, who's that girl there? I want you to tell me a story about her. I thought, here oh, we go. Okay. Goodbye, Batman. Hello, Britney Spears. Right. You know? That's it. Starts early. That's it. My loneliness is killing me. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Put on a shirt, Britney. All right. All right. I wanted to call her up. Like, what was she thinking? Okay, yeah. All right. Um, what else okay. do I have to tell you? How about Jesse Jackson going over there? That's so awesome. And how about that? Yeah. He's very touched by that. Indeed. Very touched by the Indeed. Reverend Jesse Jackson. That's the way to go, the Reverend. I believe it. Yeah. It's the way to go. Whatever you think God is, you got to get in touch with that. He went over there with the God thing going on. Mm -hmm. They came home safe. I'm all for that it's lately. I'm big thing. on that now. That's good. It's my new thing. Excellent. I'm all for that God thing. Excellent. Whatever your God is, Jewish, right. Muslim, Buddha, Doesn't I don't matter. care. Yeah. Let's get the God thing going around. Positive. Let's get it going. Good. That's great. You know what my son said, speaking of, uh, we were on the plane, and he looks out. Such a mommy thing that everyone else is going to go, how corny and ridiculous. But he looks out the window, and he goes, oh, my goodness, the clouds are on the bottom. <laughs> That was so bottom. funny. It's amazing. Yeah. Tony nominations are out today. Bump, ba da bump. That's right. And uh, Dame Judy Dench for Amy's View. You yes, know I adore indeed. her. She's Soccer great. Channing as well. Yeah. Uh, Zoe Wanamaker. And um, I was so happy to see Kristen Chenoweth nominated yes. as well. Right. Kristen Chenoweth from uh, Your Good Man Charlie Brown. And uh, both performers in Parade, who we had here, which closed. Uh, a little too shortly, quickly, I think, but they were both phenomenal. So exciting, and the yep. Tonys are going to be in June, as usual. I'll be there presenting, and it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. Great. Sadly, Nicole Kidman not nominated, should have been. Right. Leah Delaria not nominated, should have been. True. So both of those ladies, if you're watching, give you a little Spider-Man flashlight. Because it's go. good as the Tony Awards in some That's way. Right. Everyone in the audience <laughs> is getting a Spider-Man flashlight. Because <laughs> we're going to Universal Studios, Florida. And that's why we have the sun-kissed orange, because as you know, the orange is that's, all about Florida. That's and right. everyone's getting a little sun-kissed orange gift bag. I don't know what's in it, but it's good stuff. Okay, we gotta go to the Atlanta 5K tape. All right, uh, Atlanta 5K. Jeanette and uh, Christina, two of our Chub Club members, my Chub Club, went down there to cover the 5K with Coach Judy. And uh, Nestle Sweet Success sent uh, Judy and them along, along with Stouffer's Link Cuisine. We have to say cool. that every time. You get the point. They're the sponsor by the product. It's good. Here we go. <laughs> um, we'll take a look at our little um, Atlanta Chub Club tape. <laughs> Coach Judy here at the Willie Nelson Birthday Run in Atlanta, Georgia! Woo! On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Celebrating Willie's birthday here today are Chub Club members from all over Georgia. We are the Fat Outlaws Chub Club, the Plum Peaches. We are the Chubba Wubba from the University of Georgia. We are the Chubbettes. Hey, it looks like a couple of members of Rosie's Chub Club are out here too. Christina, hi, hi. 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 Getting all ready, all warmed up, ready mm. to do this practice run. Mm -hmm. We are Mama's Family Chubbettes. Your name? My name is Hilda. Who's in the Chub Club with you? Well, there's three generations of us. My daughters, Dana and Shannon. 
and my uh, granddaughter, Brooke. Now, Shannon was away from the family for right. a while. Tell me oh, about yes. that. She lived in Virginia for four years, and I missed her so much. What's it feel like to be back with your family? I love being back with my mom and my sisters. And your reasoning for doing the Chub Club? My main motivation was just my health. Have you experienced health issues with your family? Yes, ma'am. Um, with my father having heart problems, and my brother was just diagnosed with diabetes, and um, my mom had breast cancer. I'm a survivor. It's been six years, and uh, I feel great. Nobody will ever know. Hi, Judy. I think it's great. And I'm not so out of breath either after that little run. She's my everything. She's my light. I just don't want to lose her. I love her so much. If everybody keeps going and exercising and we're together, then you know, we've got that to go. What's next? Uh, Ten, 10 guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it. god, here's the line! This must be the finish line. <laughs> we did it! Where? Where is everybody? Jenna and Christina. <laughs> you know, I was so happy to know that they didn't have, they couldn't finish the race because Jenna and Christina have been so braggity saying to me, I've been running a 5K, uh -huh. and I've been saying I'm going to walk it. Uh -huh. And Jeanette called me from Atlanta. There's no way I could do it. I was like, thank you, because now they all have to walk with me, and I right. don't have to feel like the loser in the back. There you go. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Star Wars, you know, this is your place for Star Wars. Episode one, the great big flat book. Everyone in the audience is getting it. Want to find out your Star Wars connection, where you see the trailers first, where you see all the interviews with all the stars, all the new merchandise, this would be the show. I'm a huge fan. There we got go. a little sneak preview clip as well. Cool. Take a look. Only here first. Will be a hard life. <laughs> One without reward, without remorse, without regret. A path will be placed before you. The choice is yours alone. Do what you think you cannot do. It will be a hard life, but you will find out who you are. May 19th, it opens. I'm going to be seeing it May 14th at a special charity oh, screening, oh, which is going to be great. I'll tell you all about it. On today's show, the one and only Debbie Reynolds is here. Yeah. The first fart, the first fart I said, but I meant the first part. Oh, dear. The first fart. <laughs> that was bad. Of crafty versus cranky. I would be crafty. Sally Jesse would be cranky on the first part of our um, two-part <laughs> series of that. Oh, and up first, uh, my friend and yours, the one and only adorable cutie patootie, Tim Robbins, so don't go away. <laughs> Coach Judy here alongside Jen Miller from Reebok University. Jen, how do we get the most out of our walking? You know what, Judy, here's a nice thing to remember. Surprise yourself. Go that extra distance when you don't have to. It might just be to the next tree. And here's the other thing. Stay to the midline, oh. smooth and controlled. Hey, well, there you go, Chub Clubbers, your fitness tip of the week. Actor, director, writer, he's given us such wonderful films, Shawshank Redemption, Dead Man Walking, Bull Durham. Please welcome back to our show, Tim Robbins! How's it going? Very good, very good. Everything well? Yes, yes. How was the kids' birthday party? It's big birthday month for your family, yeah, right? Yeah, on Friday we had uh, Miles' birthday, um, which went very well. 
we had like kind of a carnival in the living room. We all, uh, I had the uh, snake eyes booth where uh, I had these two large <laughs> dice and the kids had to roll snake eyes in order to get tickets. And, uh, and they'd uh, win a prize or something? Yeah, at the end they'd exchange the tickets for their party bag and, you know, they, right. they got into it and it was fun. You know, they step right up, snake eyes, you know. <laughs> Try your luck at snake eyes. <laughs> Get the old carny coming out. Well, because Susan was here telling us that there were ballots involved, and I actually yes. got mine, and yes. I voted. Yes, we, um, Miles' idea was to have his own Oscars. So he, uh, he nominated all the people, and the def the best actor, best actress, best film, best cartoon film, and, and, and sent out ballots with the party invites, and uh, people came back, and... Uh, and I, uh, I was nominated for the player. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think was it... that this year? No, that no. was many no. years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 It was. Um, it didn't matter. No. No. Susan was ne uh, nominated for um, for Earthly Possessions. Right. She won. She did. Yeah. How'd you do? I, I won. I actually, <clears throat> it was a close race between me and Adam Sandler. Yeah. In uh, in Waterboy. Right. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I think a lot more of the kids saw Waterboy than the player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they're just being nice to me. Well, I have to say that as a voter, I did feel a little bit of pressure filling out my ballot. Yeah, so you can be honest. Go ahead. Well, I, I voted for Adam, but I wrote, Oof. sorry, Tim, next to it. You know, in case you were the one doing the tallying. It you was... saw, oh, this one's from Rosie, that witch. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was very close. It was. It was very close. I, I snuck a look at the, uh, the final uh, tally, and uh, I, I, by one vote, I beat Adam Sandler. Excellent. Yeah, but, are, th um... are they excited about Star Wars? Are they into that? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, very yeah. excited, yeah. 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 You're going to wait on the line now? Uh, no. No, 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 no. 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 Because they're, they're doing that, you know, the people. I know, they're already there. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I think we should all, like, bring them coffee and stuff. Yeah, we should do that. Go bring them donuts. Support group. I saw some guy got a tattoo. Really? He got a tattoo of the Phantom <clears throat> Menace on his arm. That's commitment, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Suppose it's a bomb. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, that thing forever. Walking around with a <laughs> little exit to Eden tattoo right there. <laughs> Oops, that was an error. You know, <laughs> nobody saw that. You should get free rental the rest of your life if you get a tattoo, I think, or something. <laughs> Yeah. So I saw Susan got arrested. Yes. Yeah. How was that for the family? Uh, we were all proud of her. Yeah, you're proud. <laughs> sure. Nice thing. Yeah. Yeah, my uh, mom actually called and, uh, and, one, and my dad, too, to con congratulate her on that. Sure. Yeah. You're yeah. a big family of political activism. Well, Stand yeah, up for what I you think believe. Yeah, you have to, you have to, uh, you have to speak out if you believe in something. And, uh, and uh, what she did was trying, to, I think we were trying to, still trying to call attention to the, it's not so much the police, because we have such great police here in New York City. We really do. We, you know, I, I grew up here, I've, I've always, you know, I grew up here and then I lived out in Los Angeles for a while, and I gotta tell you, the cops here are much better than the ones out there. I mean, they were, you know, and, and so I was quite, you know, the part of the whole, uh, reason for doing this is because we're, what we're trying to do as New Yorkers is call attention to bad cops, right? And trying to to when when cops are told by the police department that that, that there's a, a a policy of a search searching people that is making them look bad and making the rest of their pals look bad too, to the to the general populace. You know, it's not fair to them to have to carry out this policy. I think in that situation too, when the big error that was made. Uh, which we're talking about for police officers who, who shot an unarmed man 41 times. They shot, they uh, hit him 18 times, I believe, and 19 times with, with bullets. He was killed, sadly. Um, was that nothing was done. They weren't put on suspension until they investigated. Mm -hmm. That nothing sort of was done. Instead mm -hmm. of saying, you know what, let's take him off for now and investigate it and then see, see what happens and it'll all come to pass in, in, the, in the court. Yes. But the fact that the, that the police commissioner or the mayor didn't say right away, okay, hold it, let's take a look at this, that that's what people were standing up to say, at least do something, yeah. as opposed to not, not saying anything. And that street crimes unit has created a situation in, in, in neighborhoods in New York City where if you're a black male uh, uh, at a certain age, you fear going down the street. It doesn't matter whether you committed a crime or not. You have a lot of people with honest working people with jobs afraid of going down the street and getting pulled over by cops and harassed and so you know we want to try to change that because we want to we want uh, New York City's got the best police department we don't want this bad reputation yeah it's a tough situation they put their lives on the line every day yeah you know? and unfortunately because I think they, they didn't react soon enough 
the police commissioner and, and the mayor, that they brought them up on charges of intentional murder, mm -hmm. which is so far and above. You know, to think that these men who put their lives on the line every day went out there with the intent to kill someone, right. I think, is really an overreaction to the fact that they forgot to do something in the beginning. This is becoming like um, Charlie Rose, the show. Yeah. You know, we used to just do light, fluffy, how's that? Now we're getting into Kosovo and co the well, Columbine shooting. Well, I'm you, there's and that, that thing is just, I've been on watching the television, the Columbine thing, and just trying to understand. And one of the things I'm really um, uh, concerned about and is something I read on page 12, like two days ago, and it hasn't been mentioned since, which is this, um, the fact that this kid was on an uh, antidepressant. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've been aware of this problem for a few years. Uh, there's a, a tendency in some teachers when there's a problem with the child to recommend to the parents that they go on antidepressants of some kind or some kind of mood elevator or something. And, and what happens is because the parents are, are, are overwhelmed by it themselves, they take the word of an authority figure, a teacher, and go and ask their doctor, who's more than happy to supply a prescription for these things. And it's being pre prescribed at an alarming rate, Prozac and antidepressants, to teenagers. Now, I understand its use in, in adults, but teenagers, part of growing up is to learn how to deal with depression. You have to go through periods of depression. Being a teenager is not easy. Right. And you have to allow your child that, that those moments of growth. If you don't allow them, what happens is this violence gets pent up. It's happened again and again. That kid Kip Kinkle in, in Oregon was on Prozac. It, uh, I think it's something we have to look at. It's a that is. It's an area. That's something that hasn't really been brought up in this whole discussion. We'll take a break. We'll talk more about it with Tim Robbins right after this. Don't go away. <laughs> Tim, how did you explain that the shooting to your children? Was that a difficult thing? I mean, they see it on the TV. I, uh, yes, I, uh, especially the teenager, we talk, we've been talking about it. She said a very interesting thing. She, you know, we were watching it, and then, you know, it's becoming this meld with Kosovo. And it was, so that we were talking about the connection between that, you know, uh, which is, to me, pretty obvious. You know, if you have, how can you have uh, a, a society whose grown-ups are solving their problems of communication with violence be shocked when teenagers do the same thing? Which is how uh, uh, kids are seeing this. You know, it's like uh, this kid was aware, uh, uh, you know, the kid in Colorado was aware of, of, of Yugoslavia, did try to join the Marine Corps. They wouldn't let him in because he was on antidepressants. Right. So it's a, it's a uh, you know, it's a, very uncomfortable thing to deal with with children, but they have to know and they have to they talk, talk about it. And then Eva's watching television the other night and says, conflict in Kosovo. And she goes, conflict? That's what happens when you rear-end somebody. Yeah, you know? this is a little bit more than a conflict. Yeah. Right. It's so, so. difficult. I, I was thinking, talking to some people over the weekend, that you know we should have classes starting in elementary school, required classes of kindness and compassion yes. for kids to teach yeah. it starting in kindergarten all the way through that you have to take it and then in junior high and then in high school in order to graduate because that's the hardest thing to teach kids to be kind to each other you remember the cruelty of high school and uh, I'm, I'm sure many of us look back and, and even if we participated in, in it think how do we do that you know right. and how can we uh, try to help our kids not go down that road and how do we not how do we not lose communication to the point where we where we where it's all lost and we resort to violence I mean it's the same with kids as it is with our leaders. We've got to hold them responsible for not being able to communicate better. Yeah. So. Do you ever feel um, uncomfortable about speaking out about things that you feel? Because I know in my saying about gun control and my uh, passionate plea for the consciousness of the society to stand up and say we need gun control, that you know that a lot of people have been very vocal in their criticism of that. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, is it a scary thing for you to say what you think or do you ever? Well certainly the most comfortable l life would be just to, you know, avoid this kind of stuff. I mean, it does create conflict and stress, but I think it's, you know, that's also one of the responsibilities of living in democracy. You have to be able to question, you have to be able to challenge, and you have to be able to have the courage to do it and risk things to do it, you know? If you don't have that courage, then you might as well just roll over and let yourself be ruled in some kind of dictatorship, you know? Yeah. You, the, there, you know, it takes courage. I'm, I'm really happy what you're doing what you're doing and when people like you do that 
It gives other people courage to do the same. I think that everybody, you know, to empower everyone is the goal. To empower everyone to speak up for what they believe in. Oh, things will change. I, I guarantee you they will. I mean, they, those people are back on their heels right now. The NRA is back on their heels. They don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. They, and they, then we have to learn how to communicate with them to, so to that it's say, not just the antagonizing of each other so that, you know, Charlton Heston and the people who he leads can understand com through compassion the need for change. Because right. we all yell at them like I want to do. Right. Like I want to grab them and say, are you crazy? What are you thinking? We have to learn to communicate with them so that they can compromise too. Because right. just yelling at them doesn't do it either. Right. Even though that's where I go to usually. And to arm people, arm, to, and to, uh, to advocate arming people in schools. I mean, you listen, teenagers, you know, it, that is a rough time. You don't want them with guns, you know? There's, <laughs> I mean, no, I, agree. I have a teenager myself, and there are just, you know, it's, and I was a teenager, and I gotta tell you, that was the most erratic time of my life. I would just, you know, you get depressed, you get crazy, you get, you yell, you, you're irrational. Why give someone a gun when they're irrational? Exactly. I agree. Crazy. It's lovely to see you, as always. Yes. Thanks for coming. Tim has a movie that was supposed to come out, and it was pushed to the summer, and he showed up anyway. How's that for a sport? Oh, thank you very much for being here. Great to see you. We'll be right back with Sally Jesse. Legendary Debbie Reynolds. All right, you know what happened. Sally Jesse, me, a house, roll it. This is my new home. This is where I hope all my dreams will come true. Rosie, I know you and Sally are duking it out. I know you are really having it out, but do me a favor, please, don't you girls knock down these walls. Rosie! How are you? Oh, Rosie, I'm so happy to see you! Good to see you! Oh, thank you very much, Rosie. Don't even be well, sorry. Thank you. Let me just say right now, I'm very sorry that Sally Jesse did not show up. She said she was going to lay bricks. She said she was going to do mortar. She said Sally! all this. Sally! Hey! Hey! I'm sorry! No. Oh, my God. Hi, Sally. Great to see you. How are you? This is my good buddy, yeah. Norm. 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 Hi, Norm. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> She's handy, too. We're going to be nice. We're going to be We're nice. We're going to be nice. We're just going to handle molds. You know, OK, excuse me, Sal. Yeah. Sal, great to see you. We got work to do. Yeah, we got work to do. I'm going to go inside. You, you guys see if there's you know weeds you can pick up or something. Hi, ho, hi, ho. Let's go. Excuse me, there are a lot of other Broadway songs you can be doing. <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, over and over and over. Don't you know another song? I get along without you very well. Whoops. Really? No! 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 <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. You gotta go outside. Come on now, because she can't paint right. Now, I want to see you hold There's it. no Look business this. like show, business like no business. <laughs> Sally, your shirt's all stained with paint. I'm telling you, no. Sally, look. Oh, that's all right. You, you sure? I'm positive. Oh, okay. I'm positive. You want to know something? The I'm difference right between us? <laughs> you know the difference between me and her? A little dirt, a little paint doesn't mean a thing to me. I'm a real woman. Uh oh. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Uh -oh. How about that? How about that, Sally Jesse? Did you see that? Look, I'm not afraid of a little paint either, Sally. <laughs> you know, I like the lumberyard and the home side. I agree. And yeah. show me a hardware store, it's an orgasm. You got that? <laughs> Sally Jesse just said orgasm. <laughs> I don't know that I need to hear that. I'm only 37. I'm <laughs> ready for you to teach me how to do the bricks. Oh, the bricks, everyone. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun with bricks here. Yeah. OK. All right, Sal, so you take a Take a brick. Yeah. Yeah, Sally, just, just a minute, honey. I'll, I'll have time for you in a minute. Just Sorry. why don't you just watch what we're doing? Rosie, yeah. come on! Debbie does Rosie, <laughs> what? What, Shelly? I need you to do something really Wait quick. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Sally, I, I need her now. Sally, 
she's an it looks like an emergency. Oh, jeez. I get no, I'm it looks like mouth. an emergency. It's not an emergency. We can use No, so she's calling I, me, Sally. Rosie, I would please. Look. Oh, my did goodness. It? She knocked the line yeah. down. Yeah, she did it on purpose. You know, I'm trying to do this chub club and get fit for the millennium, but it's I'm not having a lot of success. Rosie! We'll be right there. We are very, very busy. <laughs> are you working in there? Yeah, we're working. We're doing the whole living room. Cheers. You know, if you're lying to me, you're going to go to confession. Um, we are laying the tiles in the kitchen. No, we already did that job. We did that job. OK, we're putting up a shelving <laughs> unit in the bathroom. <laughs> putting up a shelving so unit in the, in the bathroom? bathroom? She's a nice person, but the fact is, you know, I think she's a little pushy. You think so? Sally, she pushes and pushes and do this, do that. She's always saying what to do. She's not, you know, she's a nice person, I but know. I don't think she's good at what yeah. she does. No? Oh, I don't think that brick wall is going to... We were just taking a... Come on. We were just... We were just... Come on. Let's just... We were just... Oh, jeez. Where you come from? Look. You think Norm's a secret weapon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're getting married in we the We got morning. a little uh, secret weapon for you, Sally, Jesse, Raphael. <laughs> Bring it in! Uh, Take a look at that. What is that? Martha Stewart! Got a truck full of Kmart trucks! Rosie! Rosa! Bring it on in, Martha! Bring it on in! Martha Stewart, that's right. Part two of Shelly McQueen's house tomorrow. We'll be back with Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> Our next guest recently celebrated her 50th year in show business. She is delicious. Please welcome one of Hollywood's leading ladies, the one and only Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> I'm fine. It's the music. Great music. I like that first tune. Lovely to see you. You look beautiful. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. I was just watching Singing in the Rain over the weekend. Again? I, I've seen it many, many times. And uh, you were such a little cutie patootie. Were you totally nervous, Fred Astaire? Were you like... Well, I was very nervous because I was only 17 years old and I'd never danced before. Ever? So, no, no, never. I was just a little kid, and I was discovered in Burbank, California, accidentally. And I was an athlete, like I wanted to be a gym teacher. And then uh, by accident, I won this contest, and they put me in Singing in the Rain. Now, it's a true Hollywood story, right? And did you have total anxiety? Did you know Fred Astaire? Did you? No, 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 no. Who knows movie stars? I mean, if you live in a little community like Burbank and you're just a normal, average person, you don't know the movie stars, you see those big walls, and behind there are all the movie stars. But Fred Astaire was, of course, the biggest star at MGM Studios. Right. And he was very good to me, because when I was doing uh, uh, Singing in the Rain, every lunch break, everybody would go to lunch. Donald O'Connor, Gene Kelly, and at the time, Carol Haney, who later did Pajama Game here in New York City and became a big star. They'd all break. I was so panicked and so scared that I could never learn it. I would be crying under the piano and sobbing. And one day, a guy got uh, uh, some legs walked by the piano, and somebody says, "So who's under there? Who's crying under there?" So I said, "It's me, it's Debbie." <laughs> and it was Mr. Astaire, and he said, "Come, come out of there! He said, you have to stop crying because everything hard, anything good is hard to learn, and you, I'll let you watch me." So he let me watch him rehearse for about an hour. Wow. And he threw his cane and he uh, cussed at the drummer. <laughs> and it was tough. It was tough for him. So he said, see, you know, to, you have to sweat to be really good, Debbie. So just go back in, sweat some more, don't be nervous, be a wreck, and you'll be a star. Was that the end of the crying then, under the piano? <laughs> no, I've been crying my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> right. And what was it like when, like, Clark Gable, I mean, when you would bump into him on the lot, was that 
overwhelming? Oh, well, he was just so gorgeous. And he was always at the commissary hanging around. And he always dressed up for some reason, at least when I was a kid. And he wore a little watch that so kind of went that way, you know, and a vest like. And he was very tall, so he'd look down, oh, you kid. Oh, and I would faint. He called me Mary Frances because that was my real name. Right. I don't know why he chose to do that, but he did. All the girls were mad about him. Everybody loved each other. It was like a university. It really was. And they yeah. would they have one big makeup room and you would all come in and get ready to go do your different assignments? Well, it was a huge lot. So you'd, walk, you'd come through the gates. And then we had a cop, you know, and then you'd drive down this long, long place. So it was like a university on each side were all these stages. And they had the commissary and it had a, you had a barber shop and everybody gathered together, kind of like your show here. Everybody's really pals here. I noticed that's very family-like, which is neat. And uh, at MGM, it was like that. So you'd go into the makeup department, there'd be a long table. And there'd be Esther Williams and Norma Shearer and Grace Kelly and Ava Gardner and uh, Lana Turner and all, all, all these gorgeous creatures. And all the dancers would all have their legs up, you know, resting their legs. And so right. everybody had their legs up. And the, the guys had another place. I never got to see them ugly. But all the girls... <laughs> All the girls would be in there. All uh, the blondes in the morning were were pretty unattractive because, uh, well, you mean it, like Ava? Like who? Well, no, Ava was not. Ava Gardner was the most beautiful because she was all dark hair. So yeah. Like your dark hair. But the blondes, Lana Turner, myself, or anyone that was naturally. Uh, they took our eyebrows out when we were really young because they wanted to draw them any which way, so that we didn't have any eyebrows. Yeah, she just didn't have, like Whoopi doesn't have any eyebrows. Yeah. I don't know why. But I don't know why know. either. No, well, she wasn't at MGM. They didn't take hers. <laughs> so Whoopi didn't lose her whoop at MGM. <laughs> but they would pull them out or wax yeah, well, them Well, we were all sort of blaffy, so, but all Ava Gardner and Hedda Lamar and all these beautiful creatures, they were always gorgeous in the morning. It was fun to arrive there. Ann Miller looked great. And, and see everybody change in an hour and come out all looking beautiful. How did they ch who decided to change your name? Who made um, that Jack Warner. He didn't like De uh, De uh, Mary Frances. He said Mary was too plain. I was okay for Irving Berlin. Or it was Mary, Mary. I don't know if Irving wrote that. Frances, he said, was boring. So he decided on Debbie. I don't know why. I think he had a dog named Debbie, and he was. <laughs> <laughs> did you fight it? Did you have any say in it? Could you? No, no, you can't fight that. The, 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 everybody had their names changed. Rock husband wasn't Rock, and uh, everybody it was somebody else. So we went, well wound up to be Debbie. And did everyone from then on call you Debbie? I mean, yes, I didn't answer for three years because I didn't like it. <laughs> you know, hey Debbie, hey Debbie, hey, I just keep walking. Right. They had to call me Mary Frances or Franny. But I'm used to it now. After all, it's 51 years. I've been in the business since yeah. uh, oh, it's been very good to me. Yeah. We're going to take a break and be back with the delicious Debbie Reynolds right after this. Don't go away. See on Will and Grace, you're going to be back oh, on that's again. Right, I um, did. That was fun. Yeah, you're going to come on again. You think? Well, I think if they invite me, I and you just invite me, I always come. <laughs> what a funny show sure. that is! It is a very funny show, new show. I hadn't seen it, and they called me to to play one the mother of the young girl on the show, and they wrote it very funny for me, so I did it. Now you're so busy touring, you must have had to arrange all your schedules. I do, because all I do is theater now. I'm going to Dallas to do the symphony there. I just came back from Foxwood just yes, last night. I just closed here in Connecticut. Yeah, we were out there. It was fun. Yeah, that's a fun place. It is. I'm yeah. going to do a new movie June called uh, Gift of God, which will be fun in Canada. A really good story, a real story about a boy who gives his liver to his grandma. Very, very sweet oh, story. That's wonderful. Yeah. How's your little granddaughter? Good? Too cute for words. Adorable. Yeah, she's adorable. Uh, she's a big ham like me. Yeah. Yep. She likes to tap, tap dance and do all kinds of numbers. So she, we sing Abba Dabba together. I know you're jealous of that. I am, actually. I do that with my kids, too. Yeah. They're usually like, enough singing, Mommy. That's what they say to me. Too much singing, Mommy. They, like, it. they like Abba Dabba. Yeah. The Itsy Bitsy Spider and Abba Dabba are winners. Well, I played Charlotte, the spider in Charlotte's, Charlotte's Web. Web. So right. kids like me. Yes. <laughs> now, um, you wanted to talk about the uh, Marriott Senior Living. Tell everybody about this. Well, I, I'm, I'm a very big family lady. My, my mother uh, is 87, and uh, I raised my, I call her my mentor mother 
uh, my whole life. For 35, 40 years, I've always been a, more of a parent, you know, taking care of my mamas. And uh, I, it was really hard for me to find a place for them. And I looked and looked and looked at all kinds of senior homes, you know, and uh, caring places, and I didn't like them. And I stumbled upon the Marriott and independent living, assisted living, where you can go, even if you don't need much, you know, if you just feel like you can't handle it at home anymore, and it's very difficult to get around, dress right. yourself, and, and there they also have Alzheimer's units where you can, and that's big, my daddy died of Alzheimer's, and I had no place to put my daddy, and those are very disturbing topics for me because I think so much to take care of our elderly. Yes. I mean, I love babies, I love taking care of my babies, but uh, I really feel in the, our country we have a big problem, and I have found a solution with that, with finding the Marriott Senior Living, Assisted Living is called. And assisted. is it affiliated with the Marriott Hotel? Church? Well, no, it's not. That's that they have their hotels. These are very special units, like community separate units. For the same company. It's the same company, but yes. it's run so differently. It's really run like a home, and it's a very special caring place, and they have activities, they have cars to drive you places, and you live there, and you meet all these other terrific people, and it's, it's, it's like having another home. And I, I liked it so much, I said, well, I'm going to talk about it. I don't usually talk about things. I have to really believe in something to talk about it. And uh, my, my mother was definitely going to be put there. She just passed away 10 days ago. Oh, but, I'm sorry. Uh, that's where she would have been happy. She would have been very happy because she loved the people and loved to sew and they serve you food and they really look after you as very special assisted living care. Well, it's we'll put that number up on our website if you want to go on America Online, keyword Rosie. We'll put it up so you can get more okay, information. Okay, I don't have the number. But well, I just we'll get it and we'll put it up there. <laughs> uh, I think that's a wonderful thing. Is it true that your daughter's writing a movie for you? And Oh, Gary writes all the time. You know, she's a wonderful writer, and she's uh, writing a movie called for Shirley MacLaine, uh, Lauren Bacall, Elizabeth Taylor, and Debbie Reynolds. <laughs> well, I'll get in line like they do for Star Wars. Yes, it's delightful to see you. When is uh, when is that one going to be done? Does she do you have any time? Any? It's the right title, Star Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I, like I love it. it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Debbie Reynolds, you're delicious. Thank Come you, back Rosie. whenever you Thanks want. We'll be right back you. after this break. versus Cranky. Also, Natalie Merchant will be here, and one of my favorites, I can't wait, Joan Plowright, who's in Tea with Mussolini. I can hardly wait. See you tomorrow, everybody.